Hi. Hey, what's up? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Happy How you Monday. doing? Doing good. Yeah. Just like ran from my car straight to this seat. So catching nice. my breath. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But you know, how was, how was, how was your day yesterday? Dude, the day was great. I uh, was really thankful to be here with everyone who could attend, uh, you know, kicking off Holy Week. That's such an mm -hmm. exciting thing. I'm really fortunate to just have that, that chance to do that with you guys and just to dive into a little bit now with you, Lana. Yeah, it was good. It was a good morning. I enjoyed the sermon a lot. Just so, just so you know, some encouragement. It was really <laughs> good. It was like very clear. Um, and I thought that the point you made at the beginning was something that was worth noting about like the the donkey being the little donkey cult that Jesus rode in on mm -hmm. that being a symbol of peace instead of like the big like war horse type mm -hmm. thing um was a cool point to remember because oh my gosh I mean I'm I'm a perfect example of it right now I'm just running from my car into the <laughs> house or into the into this chair and like okay you know this isn't the rushing around <laughs> I should be doing this week. I'm mm -hmm. feeling convicted. Um, Jesus came at like riding a symbol of peace into Jerusalem, but like more than that, he is just, that is who he is. It's mm -hmm. just our peace. Yeah. I, uh, I really love that. As I was just doing a little bit more reading on it, uh, getting ready for the message was that the donkey really was this symbol of peace for them back then. That mm -hmm. is just something I don't think we associate at all today with donkeys. Yeah. And it was really cool, too, because not only was it Jesus, Jesus's ancestors were riding on the donkeys, but other princes as well that weren't even associated would literally ride on donkeys to show that, hey, I'm peaceful. This is me coming in a peaceful way mm -hmm. that I am, again, a royal but common person like you yeah and it was so it was just really cool that other people would uh understood this meaning but yet today if i saw anyone you know ride by out that window on a donkey i'd be like what is going on we'd probably all run over and look right. out the window and be so in awe of like what is happening Why is rather than like yeah. west goshen <laughs> yeah how to get here where's its owner you know yeah. yeah no that's true um there's a lot of symbolism that happens in Palm Sunday in general so it was like not just the donkey but also mm -hmm. the way that the people lined the path for Jesus coming in with uh the palms and with their coats and stuff mm -hmm. this wasn't like a spur of the moment random act of like everybody being like we should just we should just throw some palm leaves mm -hmm. on the ground <laughs> it wasn't yeah. random it was something that had happened many times before a lot of times when like a, a king was coming mm -hmm. back victorious mm -hmm. right yeah it was a sign of recognition for a uh for really reserved for kings actually it wasn't again something that was just done for any normal person but this is hey this is a big deal and yeah. i'm gonna go and show this way in a peaceful manner and even that's what the palm branches symbolized too was that it, it can be uh victory and it can be gentleness and it was just something that I was, again, so fascinated by that yeah. just things that we don't really see today as much as I would love. I'm a bit of a nerd for those that don't know. And I know you kind of know that I would love it <laughs> if we all walked around wearing cloaks in 2024. I think that would look sick, but we don't do that, you know, but they did. And they were they were taking them off, laying this path ahead for Jesus. And it must have just been such a beautiful thing to see, to be a part of. And that's kind of what we celebrate all of these years later, this beginning of this Holy mm -hmm. Week, Jesus's arrival to Jerusalem, and really the kicking off of these amazing events, which I know we're probably getting ahead of ourselves, but someone's going to be talking about, you know, on Good Friday. <laughs> and have, I can't yeah. wait to hear about that. Yeah, we have our Good Friday service this Friday evening that um, I'm running. Two with of the them, right? Young adults. Yeah, there's yeah. two services. So 630 and 8 o'clock will be... Uh, talking about that and you're right the way that uh the way that palm sunday happened set up this like wild contrast for mm -hmm. good friday and what that was going to look like because they went from welcoming jesus as literally as a king mm -hmm. saying you know hosanna which which means save now mm -hmm. like and so they're recognizing that Jesus has some ability to save them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some awareness there of yeah. who he is. It's not like a full understanding, but they have some awareness that this is an important person and he is capable of saving us. 
the donkey probably confused them. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were expecting some, like, warlord to come in and flip the government over on its shoulders. And instead, Jesus is like, no, like, I come in peace, you know? Like, yeah. Um, which, yeah. And then, and then you look forward to Good Friday. And you mentioned this yesterday, how the crowd turned like what the crowd was yelling we have this massive contrast in scripture um <clears throat> i'm sure that not everybody who was part of the laying palms down and laying cloaks down and welcoming jesus and i'm sure that not all of them were part of the crowd that was yelling crucify him mm -hmm. but statistically many of them probably yeah. would have had to be mm -hmm. um so we went from celebrating his arrival to you no know, crucify him mm -hmm. like we would rather have barabbas come down uh and be saved this guy who's murdered some of our people and been just like a reckless uh part of society bring him back yep. we're willing to take the risk with him we'd rather have him than than jesus yeah we'd rather have this criminal you know be spared than jesus and yeah even <laughs> if it's me. not this ah, excuse you uh, the <laughs> you know eat the fact that there was this giant crowd so excited on Palm mm -hmm. Sunday. And then less than a week later, when again, the, the governor Pilate is appealing, saying like trying to spare Jesus. Yeah. There's no one stepping up. There's no one. Where is this loud crowd that was cheering and excited and running ahead, proclaiming that this king had arrived? Where did that crowd go? Why, were, why were they not there? And how did it, why did this crowd shift instead to just calling for, you know, Jesus to be crucified. And again, that's something that we also understand today that, you know, crucifixion, obviously in death, but it really was one of the worst ways that you could die yeah. then, you know, calling for the worst way for this man that didn't deserve it, that was supposed to be their king. And instead they're all calling for the worst way to die for him. And so like, I'm so excited for us to dive into that on <clears throat> Friday. I can't wait to hear that. And, uh, you know, as long as we get a babysitter figured out, you know, it's, it's going to be great. <laughs> And yeah. uh, then, you know, of course, Easter and that amazing message that we're going to have on Sunday uh, at 8, 9, and 30. 11, 9, 30, and 11. Yeah. yeah, I was like, one of them changed, 9, yeah, 9 30, and yeah. 11, so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, really, we have to remember Sunday when we talk about Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Because Good Friday, yeah, like, without Jesus dying, there's no resurrection that happens. Mm -hmm. But if Jesus died and stays dead, then nothing that we do matters. Yep, right? Exactly. Like that's really the hinge point of our faith is Sunday morning and the mm -hmm. resurrection and the fact that he conquered death. Mm, that victory. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, and I think as we walk through this week, we have so many opportunities to bring people along and kind of just say like, hey, this is a really important week to us. Here's here's why. Can yeah. I tell you why? You know, you mentioned your, your buddy who had the car problems yesterday. And yeah. that was more than just car problems. That was like, that was intense, yeah. uh, what yeah. he was going through. Um, and it was, it was a cool thing to hear because it was afterwards, a few people were just mentioning to me that, you know, they've been in that similar situation or they knew someone mm -hmm. that was going through, you know, a rough patch or things that were... Uh, maybe not ideal or really just at that low and how are we able to just point and look towards God and look towards Christ and remember that he is always there for us that he always loves us and even if we can't see what's going on and we're frustrated we're mad you know we're running behind on something you know or we're, we have some car accidents happen that there is good that is happening and that we have a good God that loves us and we know that because of what happens on Good Friday and Easter and it's for so many more reasons but it's just something that's so beautiful about this week and kind of like to circle back to what you're saying at the beginning I'm just trying as I'm someone that's always a go 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 type of person and I'm really just trying to slow down a little this week yeah. and just be thankful and uh, just to share yeah. that with others and I already found myself in the weirdest of ways having that opportunity um, yesterday and I won't go into that long story but it was really cool that we were out shopping around and uh, my wife and my sister were out shopping and I just sat down and there was another dad that sat down right next to me. And yeah. uh, I was like, ah, you're one of us too. And he's like, refugees. And he put his hand out to give me a <laughs> fist bump. 
And I was just like, oh man, that's funny that you say that. I'm like, refugees, you know, um, huh. And we kind of talked a little bit about just that Sunday, just that Sunday morning together. You know, you yeah. never know when God's going to present you or you're going to find yourself in a situation where you can just share yeah. about him and just point it all back to him. That's true. I think I'm going to pull up real quick this Second uh, Timothy verse that you ended the uh, message with yesterday, because it it is kind of a creed is what you were saying. And the creed is just... Uh, Something many of us are familiar with, uh, for example, like the Apostles' Creed mm -hmm. um, or the Nicene Creed, which many of us grew up saying in church. I know that mm. you had a Catholic background growing a up bit, a little yeah. bit, so you probably are on some level a little familiar with it. Um, but this this is one of the kind if, of first If we creeds. are faithless, then he is faithful, I think. If we are unfaithful, yeah. he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Mm. Um and that comes from a slightly longer uh, scripture that I think is just, I'll just maybe read it. And yeah. then it could just be like our kind of way that we wrap up. It says, this is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Mm. And that... that last line of Amen. he cannot deny who he is it goes back to you know the literal rocks would cry out <laughs> yep. him coming in if the people weren't crying out yep. then the rocks were gonna do it uh do it for for them because the creation can't deny who he is and mm -hmm. and so lord help us to stay focused and and shout about who he is this week and all the weeks and Amen. every chance we get yeah just how we can share and just pass that message on that love of who christ was he came he died for us you know even when nobody was there that was uh speaking up loud enough you know he still went to the cross for us and then what we know happens on easter and so i'm so excited to yep. celebrate that with you guys for those online for those that'll be able to join us in person and, you know, of course, for Good Friday as well mm -hmm. with you and uh, just another year that you'll be leading us in the chapel, uh, you yeah. know, so slightly different setting, but it's a, a beautiful It'll time. Be yeah, it's gonna be a party. Happy Holy Week, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. We'll see you guys.